Martin Luther King Jr. reminded us some 35 years ago. He said, even in a mountain of despair, we must be able to find a stone of hope. As merchants of hope, you'll find many stones. But you see, we must make certain that we face the future with the right attitude. And you know, my children often tell me there are some folks who do need a checkup from the neck up. Dr. Crystal Kirkendall is a gifted, gracious public speaker who shares a powerful message with tips for a terrific tomorrow. With over 25 years of management and leadership positions in national organizations, she's given over 1,000 speeches in the past 10 years on four continents. She is the author of three books, the most recent of which is From Rage to Hope. She is currently president and general counsel of her own firm, Creative and Innovative Resources for Kids, K-I-R-K. She has inspired thousands with her dynamic presentations and her numerous civic and social endeavors. The results are always the same. She receives thundering standing ovations wherever she goes. I'm just lucky that I came through at a time when people were willing to look past poverty, to tap into the greatness that God had put in this poor black girl. You see, when I was coming up in Chicago in the 50s and 60s, I didn't know I was supposed to be pitiful. Unlike many of today's children who were born poor, I simply did not know that I was culturally deprived, disadvantaged, or underprivileged. I had no idea. And then I found out in the 80s, they added more adjectives to all of that. Now, in addition to everything else, I realized I was also at risk, latch key, and came from a dysfunctional family. And I tell you, they use that word dysfunctional. They want you to know something is seriously wrong. They spell it with a Y. This is definitely bad here. My friends, if we could move past poverty, and I know we can, we have to also move past something else. Because my research tells me that we do judge others very often unfairly based on something called physical attraction. I've even heard folks refer to children as FLKs. You know, I didn't know what that meant at first, but I found out those are the funny-looking kids. Now, right now, you're looking at the original FLK right here. Now, of course, I think I'm fine now. But when I was growing up, I thought I was the ugliest child God had ever created. Long, lanky, awkward looking. It affected everything about me. Now, don't get me wrong. My parents always told me I looked good. But you, do you know it did nothing for my ego? I knew I looked like them. They were supposed to tell me I looked good. <laughs> but it took another merchant of hope outside of the home to help me to appreciate the beauty that God had put inside and truly the beauty on the outside. So remember, the next time you're tempted to refer to someone else as ugly, just remember, I once read a magazine article, and it actually said one out of every four Americans really is ugly. The truth is, you're going to be knocked down many times. Many of you are going to find that you're on life's low edge. But we have to teach others that rebounds exist in life, not just in basketball. I'm grateful to those merchants of hope who taught me resilience. I've gone through the, the very tragic death of a husband and death of both parents, and I can tell you that I've learned the sun still shines. My friends, we can give CPR. You'll find that it's easy. You can make the life of another miserable or joyous. For someone else, you can be a tool of torture or an instrument of inspiration. You can humiliate or humor. You can hurt or you can heal. If I've touched only one tonight, then I thank you for this opportunity to share. Thank you.